And good morning everyone and thanks for joining us here on Up With Krim. I'm Channing Curtis. And I'm Tim Pham. We have a lot to get to, but we're starting things off with a look at our weather forecast on this Wednesday because Thomas, you're tracking some advisories locally and you're also keeping a close eye on what's happening in the southeast. Good morning. Yeah, and we're going to focus on our local forecast here because it has been raining all night long and that has prompted flood advisories for our northernmost areas. The advisory meaning that the flooding is likely occurring or imminent because the rain is showing no sign of stopping. In fact, for northeastern Washington and our North Idaho counties, the flood advisory goes until 5 p.m. today, the next 11 hours, and it could rain for those next 11 hours because the rain is showing no sign of slowing down whatsoever. We see that it has been steady. It's been moderate to heavy in a lot of these locations like Colville and Kettle Falls uh, north of Newport and into Bonners Ferry. Sandpoint getting a resurgence of some rainfall at the moment as well. This is where it's been all night long and continues to fall. So that's why the flood advisories are for these locations. Meanwhile, in Spokane, Coeur d'Alene getting a break for now, but this is going to curl back to the south. So we are expecting the rainfall to once again resume in the next two to three hours. All right, back to breaking news right now. Earlier this morning, Hurricane Adelia made landfall as a Category 3 hurricane in Florida. Already, the state is dealing with dangerous winds, rain, and flooding. So our Nicole Hernandez is joining us live from the newsroom right now. Nicole, you have been tracking this storm for several hours now. What's the very latest that you can share with us? So Tim Channing, we actually have a live look right now from Tampa, Florida right now. You can see this is from just the side of a highway here, that flooding coming up very close to the guardrail on the side of the highway. Right now we have reporters at our sister station right there dealing with this reporting on this from Tampa there. But that water rising into the streets already this morning. So Hurricane Adalia is making landfall a few hours earlier than forecasters expected. We've been tracking information from the chief meteorologist Bobby Deskins at our sister station over in Tampa this morning. Two hours ago, he said the storm surges were between four and five feet along the coast, and those kept growing as they just reached high tide about an hour ago. Now, Bobby Deskins has also been tweeting out tornado warnings all morning long. This storm came in as a Category 4 storm. Then early this morning, the National Hurricane Center downgraded the storm to Category 3. That means winds are reaching between 111 and 129 miles per hour. The National Weather Service says a storm this strong will cause, quote, devastating damage and leave people without power for weeks to months. Now, already this morning, St. Pete police have had to rescue someone from this flooding at a mobile home park. Florida declared a state of emergency for dozens of counties. And while the U.S. Coast Guard was giving an update on the storm this morning, the lights actually flickered. So take a look. We expect, expect to begin overflight damage assessment of the west coast of Florida at first light as soon as the storm passes and safe flight conditions allow. The U.S. Coast Guard units and more than 5,000 National Guard troops are ready for search and rescue operations, and thousands of electricity workers are also ready to help restore power after the hurricane passes. We'll, of course, continue tracking this hurricane as it continues pushing further into Florida this morning, bringing you as much new video as we can. In the newsroom, Nicole Hernandez, Crime 2 News. This morning, we are tracking a new wildfire near Orofino called the Hospital Fire. According to Clearwater County, this fire is fully lined, but it is 0% contained. It is estimated to be burning about 30 acres, which is the equivalent of about 22 football fields. The county says there are evacuations in place for people living in the Wixon Heights neighborhood, but they are expected to be lifted sometime this morning. There is a Red Cross shelter set up at 479 Michigan Avenue for people who have been displaced by this fire. We're continuing to gather more information and we'll bring you updates all throughout the morning. Turning to the other wildfires we've been covering over the past two weeks, this morning all evacuations for the Oregon Road fire have been lifted in both Spokane and Ponderay counties. That fire is now 79% contained. However, level one and two evacuations remain in place for the Gray Fire, which is 90% contained. Both fires combined burn more than 21,000 acres. Those fires have also destroyed more than 600 buildings. 
Now, as we see these evacuations lift, people are returning home to clean up what was left behind. During a community meeting last night, Spokane County officials went over the steps that residents need to take in order to safely remove debris. The first thing people need to do is get an asbestos survey. If that survey comes back negative, property owners will need to show proof of that when they take debris to the landfill. If it comes back positive, a certified asbestos abatement company is required to conduct the cleanup. Spokane Regional Clean Air says that even if a home was recently built, asbestos could still be present in building materials. You can get it in your lungs. So it's a concern for yourselves. It's a concern for us, the garbage guys that are transporting. And it's also a concern for the landfill. Over the next two days, assessment teams will be visiting the hard hit areas, collecting information to get more state and federal resources. You can find more information on asbestos testing and debris removal on SpokaneCleanAir.org. Well, less than two weeks after the Gray Fire impacted their community, students in Medical Lake will be returning to school this morning. Cram 2's Brandon T. Jones is joining us live this morning in Medical Lake as kiddos are getting ready to head back into the class. But Brandon, was there a point when the district actually considered postponing this year's start date? Because I'm sure a lot of people have been impacted, especially students and teachers there. Yeah, good morning, Chan Channing. I mean, that's absolutely right. And there were some very serious conversations about moving that start date back because as you can see, take a look right here. All of this is completely charred up and that's just yards. I mean, a matter of yards away from Hallett Elementary School, which is the only elementary school here in Medical Lake right down the road. There's Medical Lake Middle School and then Medical Lake High School. So at one point, during the fires, people didn't know if they were going to arrive back to their community after those evacuations and find that their elementary school was completely gone. Thankfully, that is not the case. But as I mentioned, there was some serious conversations about what they should do at the start of this new school year. We know hundreds of homes and structures were destroyed because of the fire. Because of that, school officials met constantly, even sent out family surveys to figure out the best approach for bringing students back. They discovered 12 district employees and as many as 20 families were displaced by the fire. Countless others are dealing with emotional and financial stress left behind from those flames. For some kiddos, getting into the, the normal of, of learning and, and math and, and reading are, are absolutely you know, the way that they need to, to process and, and uh, deal with uh, what's going on. But for others, they're going to need some more kind of, of those social emotional type supports. The Medical Lake School District has said they'll be able to help with school supplies and other resources, along with the donations still pouring in from neighbors. If any student is not ready to come back, school officials also say they'll meet them where they are. That includes transportation in the form of rides to school, emotional support, and helping them through the process of getting back when they are ready to return. So in the next few hours, we'll start to see some of those students getting back into the classroom. And when they arrive, they'll still have that smell, that, that overall stench of land that has burned right next to their schools. But for now, reporting live in Medical Lake, Brandon T. Jones, Crim 2 News. 609 this Wednesday morning where weather conditions still rainy, especially across the northern portions of the inland northwest, but an overcast, deep, cloudy day at the moment in Spokane and Coeur d'Alene. The rain expected to resume at around 8 or 9 o'clock this morning when that rainfall starts to curl back southward across the inland northwest. We'll show you what I'm talking about here over northern Washington where it has rained all night long and now we're starting to see a band of rain appear over Lincoln and Grant County that will swing into Spokane in the next two to three hours.